you know, people have a lot of countdown lists when it comes to New Year's and New Year's Eve. That's for sure. And it's that time of year. It is. Now, it's really tempting to do a top five or a top ten list. Right. But I think on this topic, I want to jump right to the absolute number one top of our list, New Year's Eve experience. It is amazing. So let's talk about that. Well, welcome back to the channel. I am Terry with Next Wave Cruising. I'm Rich with Next Wave Cruising. And we're happy to come to you this holiday season from beautiful Australia. Yes, it's summertime. It is summertime. Isn't it nice yeah. to be out here and enjoy this kind of weather? It is just absolutely perfect. Yeah, it really is very nice. And anytime we've been here during the holiday season, we can see a range of temperatures from, if you look at it from a North American's perspective, right. maybe in the 70s Fahrenheit, all the way up into the 90s or even 100. But right, right now it is probably in the 70s and just about perfect out mm -hmm. here. Absolutely. And that sets the stage for this being the New Year's Eve weekend. Right. And one of the best, best things that we've ever experienced that we would highly recommend is our top New Year's Eve experience in the world. Yeah, we Where were would you call so it? fortunate to be able to do New Year's Eve in Sydney Harbor. That's right. And you know, New Year's Eve in Sydney, Australia is a major event. It, it attracts is. millions of visitors from right. around the world. Right. And a random bird or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Australian birds and wildlife are bigger than ours yeah. <laughs> and louder. Their, their wildlife can beat up our wildlife, that's Anytime. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and so it goes. <laughs> but you know, back to what we were saying. See, <laughs> well, with my paws. Okay, go live in another tree. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> okay. You know what's due to do it again. <laughs> yep. Well, Sydney is great, and the city is just known for its iconic New Year's Eve fireworks right. display, taking I mean, place right at midnight, right. right at the harbor. Right in the harbor, and there's so much to see right in the harbor. No matter which way you turn, it's, there's these iconic views. That's right, and one of the cool things is because Sydney and Australia are on the other side of the international dateline from many of us in North America, they go first, right? right? They're about the or first about to the take first, place. Right. In terms yeah. of a major city, right. they're about the first to take place, and they are about the first always to be broadcast. Right. And if you look at that from home and you think, wow, that would be a bucket list item. Mm -hmm. If we could say take one bucket list item and book it, book it. this is the one, and yeah. we'd be uh, thrilled to help you do that. It yeah. is an incredible experience. As you said, the main event is right at Sydney Harbor with many components. Mm -hmm. The Harbor Bridge is there. Right. The opera house is there. Right. The boats are in the water. Right. People are on land, on islands out in the water, and uh, on boats. They're on boats, right? They're and everywhere. All of that is incorporated mm -hmm. into this celebration. The fireworks right. are set off from multiple locations. Right. And I think a lot of people don't even realize there are two harbors. Yeah. There's the main Sydney Harbor that you think about with the bridge, mm -hmm. and behind it, Darling Harbor. And there are fireworks and festivities back in the second Going harbor on, over there. on that side of the right. harbor bridge as well. So no matter which way you turn There's... and what you're doing in warm weather, right. wearing shorts right. and comfortable <laughs> clothing, not freezing like right. New York City, right. you can have a really, really amazing time um, as you kind of circulate around the harbor area. Right. And then one of the biggest things is to figure out 
where you want to be and how you want to spend that time. Right. And I think that takes some planning. So it maybe does. we can unpack a little bit the mm-hmm. idea of going to Sydney, enjoying the New Year's Eve there, mm-hmm. and maybe even, I think, one of the best options is to pack that up with a cruise and afterwards. pack it up with a cruise. And exactly. head out of Sydney Harbor on a cruise ship, and right. we can show some examples of how that works. Right. But you share some thoughts about getting into Sydney because, well, you know, just showing up for the fireworks, maybe you're not doing that justice, right? You, right? you really, you really, everybody always talks about, you know, always arrive a day early. Well, for this, you really should uh, because if you arrive uh, in at the airport, and then you have to get to your hotel in Sydney. Um, if you go, you know, I think it's about two o'clock or so. After two o'clock, all the roads are blocked off. You're not getting in. So this wonderful not event. By, not by road. Not anyway. by road. By, I mean by, by foot. Car, by, right. could, by foot. By foot. By foot, you're going. To so do yeah. That. So you know, you're really much better off to you know to land the day before, get yourself to the hotel. Uh, figure out how you well you should figure out before you even get on a plane where you want to see it from and, we can talk about and that. we can talk about that but uh, you, you really need to come the day before so that you're not under stress trying to get into town uh, into the harbor at your hotel before they shut off these roads because once they shut the roads you're walking in and there are just like really a million people plus out on the streets oh, there really because is. it's gorgeous right. but it really does change right. the dynamic of how you get around and how long it takes right and you know you talk about coming in a day early maybe even give yourselves a few days right because there's an awful lot to do and see in sydney there is even before the fireworks display exactly starts. and if you're going to take a cruise depending upon what day your cruise goes you can be exploring the city after the fireworks that's right and then up to your cruise or you can just do it you know before so we, we'd have to figure that out. Right. But I, there's a wonderful Chinatown in mm-hmm. Sydney, and right. that's a fun place to visit. It right. takes a little time. Uh, there's the beautiful Royal Botanical Gardens that you can walk or bike through that right. are right adjacent to the Opera House. Mm-hmm. The Central Business District with some amazing restaurants oh, and the secret rest- bars. Secret bars, secret oh, restaurants. Oh, such a good time I there. I tell you, yeah. You and, have to call us because and, you're going to want to know about these. Yeah, it's they're, they're, they're not, there's no signs, there's no, you, you, you know, come on down this way. You, you have you to should, know. <laughs> if you know, yeah, you behind know. This dumpster there's a door and you go down yeah trust me on this and it might be worth it and it is worth it yeah they're there's fun. some just fun fun right. things to do and see uh there are historic areas mm-hmm. where the settlers came right at and near the harbor right and, and you can do a tour of that you can do a tour of that you can do the bridge climb right not on new year's because it's all blocked off for right. fireworks but right. otherwise it's a working bridge mm-hmm. and so while pedestrians bicycles and vehicles are going across there's also an opportunity to climb to climb to do the bridge walk the inner or the upper right climb which is probably beyond what i could handle <laughs> i've watched people up there they look like little ants going and, across. And, and they they don't they don't cancel for weather so if it's raining you better bring Be something ready. with you Be ready you're to going go. right the other thing is you can tour that opera house they right. are enjoying their 50th year mm-hmm. and it is just outstanding the performances that come in here right uh the the different aspects of the history right uh the challenges of getting it designed and made and mm-hmm. now it's become this most iconic you know kind of a, a place in the world right so that's not to be missed and there are restaurants yeah. there there's and all a lot yeah to do, i was gonna right say there's all kinds area. of things right Right around there, there's restaurants and pubs and all kinds of things to, you know, to just have Experience. what a great party that you can do over and, there. Right, because so. all of those are all gearing up for, you know, New Year's. Right. So come in a couple of days before, see so many of the sites, get out to the beaches. Oh, yeah. Some gorgeous beaches, some of which you can get to by ferry right, right. from the harbor. Mm-hmm. And uh, those beaches are fun. And again, right. lots of cute shopping and seaside towns. Right. You can over to, head over to Bondi Beach, which is, again, a very, very world famous beach. Right. Uh, look at the, the water there, mm-hmm. the pool that's right adjacent and built in to that's, the ocean. That's fun. Is that yeah. kind of cool? That's really kind of cool. And I then like the that. beach walk. And the beach walk, which we did, you know. A couple and, times. Yeah. We've done that a couple so. times, and we really enjoyed that. And you can yeah. go a short distance or you can go pretty far down right. to some of the other beaches and back. Yeah. But those those are great and maybe a little bit more accessible by road to get down to that beach rather than right. by ferry. So all of those things happen. And then you find yourself back in the, the central area of Sydney, mm-hmm. right near the harbor, 
and you're ready for New Year's Eve. And you know, it can be an expensive proposition. It, I think that's the other thing is. to think about. Um, again, it's like going to New York, right. but in the Southern Hemisphere, it's just that iconic. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to really think and plan ahead to do a great job for yourself because right. there's some interesting values to be had right. and considerations. Mm -hmm. You know, do you want to be on a boat because they're all boats are lit up and boat parades and whatever. Right. But you don't get back till the boat gets back. That you don't get back till the boat gets back, and uh, they they do uh, charge. <laughs> yes, they charge a fair they, amount they to are, get they you are, out there. They are pricey on those. And, and getting out to the know, little islands and, that are out the in the islands, viewing there, area, there's, same there's thing. There's limited availability for all of those things, so and you obviously wait to the, get back the price off, goes up. Right, yep. you've got to be able to come back off. So. Um, so think about that, but there are things to do on land mm -hmm. and there are paid ticket events. Right. There are some, you know, hotels that are offering right. great viewing mm -hmm. and parties. And we can talk to you about where some of the best right. views really are. And that's, that's what we did. And we had a great time because they had, they had, um, a, you couldn't beat the view. No, uh, it we was were right perfect, there at the, perfect view. Right there and then the of course harbor. they had, you know, uh, all kinds of uh, buffets out and everything. So it was, it was really a nice way the way we did it. You know? Right. And to be able to then go out and experience, you know, being part of the crowd, but coming right back to your yeah. hotel. Yeah. So if you're in the right locations, you can get around a little bit and enjoy that. Um, and we have some tips for our customers right. about some of the ways you can plan ahead and get a much greater value. Yeah, we can really help best, you plan exactly. Best viewing spots yep. because we uncovered some really interesting things in our research that right. a lot of people don't know about. Right. Um, so I wouldn't overlook the, you know, the opportunity to get some advice on this one because it's a once in a lifetime and you really want it to go off perfectly. Right, absolutely. And, uh, and be ready. Yep. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was that you don't have to wait till midnight for the fun to begin yeah you know and there are a lot of family friendly events in right. new years at, at sydney yep. um, of course the fireworks being you know a major attraction but that's not all of it yeah. and so you can also think about the fact that they have a fun day mm -hmm. down near the harbor where they do you know activities and face painting and all kinds of things right. that are family friendly and kid oriented right. it's a and full day you know extravaganza that goes you can on. keep right. the family amused that people aren't right. going to stay up till midnight they can still see fireworks they i think sure you can. were going to tell us about right. that because i think around nine o'clock yes they have the the family fireworks that goes off now it's not it's not the midnight fireworks but it's a pretty nice display uh, i was really surprised that really? it was as much as it was i figured you know they'll send off a little bit but it was really nice and the kids really love it and, and they get to see it and then if they go to sleep or if they, you want to bring them home you can do it that's right you can also go over to or back to the hotel because you're not driving out of there <laughs> <laughs> hopefully in walking distance you can also go across to taronga zoo hmm. and that is the really famous zoo in sydney and if you want to see you know some of the the great wildlife species that are there and the the friendly little animals right. you can visit there but they also do special new year's eve events including for families right. so live music uh, the opportunity to have the animal encounter you know from a family point of view right. and still including fireworks and right. that's separate from the fireworks at the main Sydney Harbor right. so that's another opportunity and there's also that New Year's Eve at the Sydney Opera House mm -hmm. where there are performances and sometimes film screenings so even in addition right. to those outside fireworks there are other family friendly events and they hold they light up the whole outside of the of the oh uh, my Opera gosh. House too so it's not just the fireworks I mean the the Opera House is lit up and they have all those tiles out there oh, my are, goodness. are really become a work of art uh, they really do well, yeah well, i'm so sure it's, it's all laser oriented yeah and so. it's beautifully yep. done and it's there's a lot to see and do mm -hmm. as well as watch those boats that are out on the harbor themselves and a mm -hmm. lot of them are lit and playing music and doing their boat parade early so right. for families mm -hmm. there's a lot you can do maybe culminating with that nine o'clock fireworks right by the opera house and as you said tuck everybody in who needs to be tucked in right but if you're up for the midnight fireworks it is not to be missed you know right. it looks pretty cool on tv right it looks way better in person yeah it's, it's one of those things where the dimension and the sights and the sounds don't quite exactly come across yeah in the if, same if you've way. cruised alaska and you look at the majestic you know uh, countryside of Alaska and then you look at your photos and you say it just doesn't compare well this is the exact same, same thing. thing right right yeah. so I would say absolute number one bucket list for us uh, from a New Year's perspective was right. to get to Sydney right. and it 
it, it certainly delivered. Right. It certainly delivered. And I think one of the things that we really love about Sydney is that in that commercial harbor, right downtown with the restaurants and the hotels, the opera house and the, the bridge, is the cruise port. That's the it. The overseas passenger terminal yep. is right there for major cruise lines. And yeah. so what a better opportunity than to you know kind of combine, combine it and what you're doing for New Year's with a cruise right exactly. before or right after. Yep. And those cruises that leave out of Sydney are, are offered by many of our oh, favorite sure. and you know major cruise lines. Mm -hmm. Royal Caribbean, Princess Cruises, Holland right. America, Celebrity, right. P&O for Australia. Right. And Carnival's in a there. Yeah, a number, number of yep. others. And so. sailing out of Sydney Harbor is iconic in and of itself and disney's also going there too ah, so, so i think are they going to be more. out of uh, melbourne or are they going to be out of Sydney? i'd have to look we up. have to look and see. i have to check for but, that but right. being able to get down there is is definitely a treat and the the other major lines are already going out of Sydney, right. so you can do that mm -hmm. now you might be looking at an australia uh itinerary because sydney being on sort of the east coast of australia has great opportunity for sailing to go north right. up toward the Gold Coast, toward right. the Great Barrier Reef, mm -hmm. and up toward the Northern Territory. People like getting up to Darwin or, right. or Carnes and just lots of things to see there. Or your favorite. Uh, at the most beautiful countryside I can e I've can i ever seen uh, to date, I haven't seen them all, is uh, New Zealand. Right. To, uh, so to go from Sydney around New Zealand and back. It's amazing. What a cruise that is. And if you do some back-to-backs, you can get to see the Barrier Reef and you can go over to New Zealand. If you you're going to fly 16 hours from LAX, you may as well, you know, just Make, do, the, you, do it. You're going right? to do this trip, do it right. right. But these itineraries are incredible. They take you to great landscapes. Mm -hmm. They take you to really fun and unique areas to explore right more water oriented opportunities like Auckland a city right. that's sort of built on the water right in New Zealand water. Yep. and there's boating opportunities mm -hmm. and all kinds of fun things to right. do we took a little ferry out to a, a little island we and did. we had brunch out there it was great and came back yep. and, and we you know again you just docked right in the middle of, of all the of action. the city so that exactly. was great yep. some of the the smaller ports uh, have kind of access into just incredible lush greens right. deep ravines high mountains it's just in incredible right. there uh, going to hobbit town you would think oh i don't know it is absolutely worth it whether you think you're a lord of the rings fan or not i've it, never yeah. seen anything like yeah. it in my life when i first heard it, I went, really we're gonna drive all the way out to Boy, am I glad I did because it really was very cool. It yep. is so much fun. It's great to go into the the Green Dragon Inn and actually have a pint. Have a you know, pint. You, it's, yep. it's for real. You yep. can walk in there and do that. You, you, you can really... visit the Hobbit holes that are made for very right. small people. And, and, and then the big, the big ones people. because of the movie, they wanted to show, you know, big people, actual size people needing to go into what they thought were the little ones so yeah it was it was kind of neat the way they did it they've done a lot of very creative things yeah. and that's all part of a working farm it is um, and so the sheep are out there mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, of other commerce going on right but visiting Hobbit Town is a big big deal that's a big thing if you're on the North Island right. in New Zealand now you can also head to the South Island one of our favorite stops there was Picton and that was where we did wine tasting oh yeah and that wine country and the taste of those wines were just really worth the stop yeah. I highly recommend even it. if you're not a wine person but especially if you are to be able to go we must have gone to you know several different uh, you know wineries Stops, that day absolutely. and uh, it, it was really you know and you're a, able to do it if you want in sort of small group excursions so yeah you're you in really a van get right personal ex uh, exposure right to your tour guides and to the people at the wineries mm -hmm. and a lot of personalized service you don't feel like you're just being packed in a bus so right if exactly. you do it right you can do it in small groups it's it's greatly worth it yeah. and then there are other parts of the South Island because as you head south you're actually heading toward the the colder climates, right. there are incredible cruising days that you can do down at the bottom of the mm. South Island. And the weather is radically different than the warm, warm weather up oh, on the, the North, North Island of Auckland and mm -hmm. Taronga and right. Bay of the Islands and things like that. So to be able to see the contrast, to be able to see the, the colder weather right. and the, the, the clear, crisp water, oh, it's, uh, amazing. it's really incredible. Yeah. And then to sail back to Sydney is another couple of days on the ship, and right. it is just the best. It is. You pull back in early in the morning as the sun's coming up, 
over that over Sydney the, Opera House. Over the Opera House. And you pull up right near the bridge right. and then pull right into the terminal and you don't want to get off That's that right. ship. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely could. a once in a lifetime opportunity, except you should do it more than once. Yeah, well that's that's right. <laughs> that's and our so, plan. That's our plan. Right. We're gonna you know we, you know, we're in we're in uh, uh, in Melbourne right now, but we're gonna come back this spring because I really don't like that. Uh, how long that that, that flight, flight is, is to get here so what we're going to do is we're going to cruise back that's right now at the right time of year right you can either cruise from hawaii all the way down to sydney right or in the spring in when the ships spring, are repositioning right. the northern hemisphere spring in the April and May time frame, you can hop on that ship in sydney and sail all the way back to the u.s back up to back to honolulu right with yep. a few stops in French Polynesia and New Zealand and to New Zealand. help you along. And it's, it's you know, so I'm really to looking forward to that, so we're going to do that. Right? Yeah. That's a big one so for us. So we're coming back down in a couple of months. Yep, so we'll have that to add to the experience that we've shared today. Mm -hmm. But to sum up where we've been, if you're thinking about what to do, you know, you only have so many once a year experiences like right. New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. What is your plan over the next couple of years? Right. And if you really want to make it count, Sydney, Australia is one that will be, you know, absolutely, right. it'll deliver. Yeah, it, it sure it, will. It's a trip of a it, lifetime. It, Do it with family and yeah. friends. You want to share it and enjoy it. We've got lots of tips from having done it and had some great ideas about yep. ways to get around and really maximize your opportunity. And I think, again, connecting that with a cruise before or after is a really lovely way, way to, to, do uh, it. to exactly. see a lot of this area, which right. is a big geography. And you it can't is. do all of it as a road trip. No. So <laughs> doing it by ship is definitely the way to go. You right. know, even the coast of Australia, it's, that would be huge. a lot of driving. Yeah. And it, it's, it's not right. necessarily the way to do it. Right. So um, that that's our best tip. As you head into the new year, put that one on the list. Right. Don't put it on the bucket list. Put it on the bucket list. Right. And if you found something helpful, as we've shared this information about iconic Sydney Harbor and New Year's Eve and all the fun that's to be had, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, what else can people do? Well, let's subscribe to the channel. That's a New Year's resolution. There you go. Yep. But don't wait. Just do it now. Do it now. While, while you're here, just do it. And turn on notifications. That way you'll know every time we post a new video to the channel. Right. And you'll hear about our excursions at our adventures right. as we head around the world again coming to you live from australia on this video on which this is video. a great way to spend uh, yeah. the holidays and uh, sydney harbor is the place to spend your new year's eve and then let's talk about that cruise so next wave cruising our contact information is below this video and if you're interested in more of our adventures don't leave until you check the video in the upper right bye now